and uh, the Mayans, which are false prophets. You know, they, they didn't worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They didn't follow the ways of God. So they were false prophets. And there's no way in the world I'm going to believe what a Mayan tell me. I'm going to believe Jesus Christ. He said when they said peace and safety, then sudden destruction is going to come up on them like a woman prevailing with child. He said, but the end ain't yet until the gospel, the, the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom is preached all over the world. Then she'll come in. The and now men is tampering with, with nature. They create this blue beam and then they'll shoot it in the sky. And off the backdrop of the sky, you will see an image. In any image that they want to project in the sky, the masses of the world will see this image and they will believe that it's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because now they're faking the rapture using these man-made devices. And they can project anything off the backdrop of these clouds using this device. And not only that, they also can use this device to zap your embryo in your womb to change your baby that will change the fetus and cause that fetus will, from being... From, being a male and changing it into a female. But this is the wickedness of, 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 of these of, of men today, the elite of the world. They're so wicked because they're, they're channeling these Nephilim evil spirits, these demons, the same way Hitler did in order to create a super being. This is what they're doing. And they're not going to stop at nothing. They want to control the earth. They don't want Christ to come back and proclaim this world. But we know that according to the book of Daniel, that Christ is going to come back with 10,000 of his saints. He's going to plant his feet on the mountain. He's going to plant one feet on the land and one feet on the sea, proclaiming and showing ownership of taking the earth back and bringing them down a new Jerusalem and a new heaven, purifying the earth with fire. And they have another weapon called the harp. And with the harp, they use this machine. Once they turn it on, it will cause a ma massive earthquakes all over the world. So we need to be very aware of what they're doing. They're, they're, they're causing and inducing storms, sending uh, tornadoes. This, this thing can induce tornado tornadoes. It's not just limited to earthquakes. So we better wake up and realize what they're doing with these weapons. They can make it hail. You're seeing more uh, uh, hail coming out of the sky now. Uh, they they using these weapons uh, to manipulate the uh, magnetic fields in the air to open up portals, trying to time travel. Men have, have tampered into everything and have accomplished these things. So we don't need to be afraid. The Bible says, "Fear not." So we don't have. We're not afraid of FEMA, but we need to understand their plan. We need to understand what they're trying to do, to where we can take a stand. We can stand up against it. And the more people. Uh, that become aware of what's going on, then we don't have to worry about the king after plan. We don't have to uh, be fall victim to this plan. And we can take a stand because FEMA plans to kill over 500,000 people to try to depopulate the earth to cause these natural disasters. They're behind the whole thing, man. And when we don't go and, and, and worship Jesus Christ and stand in a safety place like he told us, which is under his wing, which is under his blood, which is uh, 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 putting on Christ, becoming Christ-like, being filled with his spirit, then we're not, we're not. Be told. People really need to understand that these people, you got a guy named Nikola Tesla, and he came up with uh, how to captivate electricity and how to put all of this stuff into play, even time traveling and teleporting it and causing things to disappear. But Jesus said in uh, Samuel, Second Samuel, he talks about the dark clouds under his feet and how uh, the darkness was under his feet. And in Psalms 18 and 9, he talked about how he bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a chariot and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. So this is God stepping out of eternity into time through a portal. He's opening up the heavens. He's opening up that second heaven, which is through space, teleporting and stepping into our time. So this is what's going on. And we really need to understand that this stuff is out there, is available. We, if we become supernatural, we can fight against this stuff spiritually. The fight is not physical. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against 
principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. So this is what we need to do. Take charge, get on our knees, get a company of men and get on our knees and cry out against homosexuals. Cry out against um, uh, all of this ideology that's being spoken by these false prophets. Cry out against the New World Order. Cry out against, the, uh, against Hollywood. Let them know what they're doing. They're causing men to worship the dead. Cry out against these things. And this is the guy that played Mrs. Doubtfire, which was based upon a true story. The guy Daniel here, um, the thing that he did in order to try to get his children back, he became a prostitute just to try to see his children. But his wife gave him custody of the children, but then somehow he lost custody because he was on drugs or whatnot. And then in order for him to get his back into the lives of his kids, he had to go to this extreme. So this is what our government is doing to men. It's, it's favoring the women over the men. In 1993, he convinced his wife to give him the responsibility of the kids. And he had his own TV show. This guy was wealthy. But he went under a Great Depression after and then began, started drinking heavy and he lost his TV show. And then, and then order, and then, and then, and after that, he lost custody of his kids. And then the next year, he was trying to get his kids back. And then, and then doing that, he dressed up like a prostitute, which I didn't see how that was going to try to help him get his kids back. Uh, but he had to try, I guess, to trick his wife to to come around to be in the kids' life. But this is what the governmental system is doing to our men. Wake up. Let's I made the most vulgar, entertaining, exciting, actionful, sensoramic, uh, give them a new thrill every five minutes, have it everything, sex, violence, humor, because I want people to come and see it. So it's like trying to smuggle in ideas. So I think filmmaking, uh, maverick filmmaking is, is uh, subversion. Every 15 pages, nudity. Pages, not you now in the script, and whether it's uh, a leg, uh, full nudity, or maybe just the suggestion of nudity, but every 15 pages you got to keep that interest going. Yeah, I wanted. I, I certainly insist it was never meant to be anything but a wicked film. That's true. Everything about movie making is manipulative. When you walk into the theater, you're buying a ticket to manipulation. The whole process is manipulating something that wasn't when you walk in. You get oh, movies are important and they're dangerous because it's, um, you go into a, a little dark room and become incredibly... You know what was amazing? In 1982, the Surgeon General of the United States released a report with five volumes of documentation proving, proving beyond any shadow of a scientific doubt that prolonged exposure to violent imagery on television encourages more hostile, violent, and aggressive attitudes and behaviors in real life. Whatever I've seen on the movie is what I imitated. The influence of television is certainly far, far greater than the influence of traditional Christianity. And then ABC uh, began to challenge that and said that there's no scientific evidence that imagery impacts the real world behavior. In the movies we shall go, where we learn everything that we know. Because the movies teach us what our parents don't have time to say. Because the movies teach us what our parents don't have time to say. Now here's a movie where Leonardo DiCaprio played in. Uh, in this movie, he's wearing a black trench coat. He goes into the school with a with a shotgun or sawed off shotgun and he began to kill up everybody just shoot up everybody in the school and the kids are cheering him on so then what you have when happened when he came into the cafeteria and you could oh, hear yeah, like bombs and shotguns these going kids, off this when got into my head and said that as if we were all wanted to die this can't be happening to our school no. you should be safe at school Okay, we want to kind of talk about some of these demonic movies uh, because Satan, he loved to try to display his power through Hollywood and try to put fear in uh, the saints of God and just uh, humanity, period. And all throughout these, this movie, The uh, Exorcist, 
and uh, the paranormal activity that uh, dragged me to hell. His uh, his objective, his goal is to bring you down to hell with him because he know that he have a short time, the Bible says. And also the Bible says, greater is he that is in me, which is Christ Jesus, than he that is in the world, which is Satan that's in the world and trying to run the world. And the thing about these movies, if this movie can detain you, it allowed this the spirit of, uh, of of a demon to enter you and to possess you. So they can detain you, but they have to detain you in order to enter you. Now, the story behind the uh, movie, the paranormal activity, uh, parts one, two, and three, uh, Steven Spielberg took one of the movies home to examine it before they actually began to release the movies. And they wanted him to look at the ending and maybe change the ending for them. And uh, he played the movie in his home, and he had one of the rooms in his home, one of the bedrooms, the doors had slammed. And he, you know, cut the movie off, and he went to go see what was what was wrong with the, with the room, and the door had locked. He wound up having to call a locksmith to unlock the door, but he had paranormal activity uh, happening in his home due to playing that movie and not having the power to cast out those those demons and receive what he was seeing on a uh, conscious level and you have this guy chris angel he's making the uh, pyramid that's his sign he deal with the a he changed his name to chris angel he uh showed this black magic and you have a lot of musicians that he practiced this black magic and just look and look at the way this guy dressed and you can tell that he's a worshiper of satan he's walking on water he's levitating flying from building to building and a lot of this stuff is not real it's just magic it's a trick. A magic is a trick. It's, it's an illusion. It's not really happening. And he depicts himself doing this, but it's, it, it's causing an illusion to you. It's giving this illusion to you by a demonic spirit. And uh, it's all dealing with And you look at his cross, he wear, he'll wear the A in, in, in the middle, and he'll wear the cross above the uh, A and one cross above below the A, or he may wear it the opposite, where the cross is in the center, the A is above the cross and the A is uh, below the cross, uh, really cursing God and marking, uh, making the mockery of the cross of God by wearing it in the center. And you'll always see where he have the A above and beneath the uh, cross. And uh, it's, it's very demonic, very demonic. And there's it's really nothing to say that we really have to stay away from the Ouija board. People are becoming possessed by these things. So all throughout the movie of the uh, paranormal activity, they show they try to uh, strike your interest in the re we the Ouija board, and you'll go out and go and buy the Ouija board, thinking that it's just a game that this really don't happen. But you begin you open a doorway in your home for paranormal activity to go on, and demonic activity will go on in your home. And if it's not actually going on in your home, it'll actually possess someone in your home. And you'll begin to see an uh, attitude change and a uh, different in that child or that subject will go a totally different way because there's so much that the enemy have going on in Hollywood. They, uh, the movie with the Invisible Man, Satan is, is bent on presenting or, or show, showing forth his power, which God is the total, op total opposite. He only show forth his power when he's going to get the glory. And he'll use his men and his, his uh, servants to do his bidding in the earth, but the glory go back to him. So you have all of this going on in Hollywood. Uh, everything is based upon depicting the Trinitarian, the uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, which we know all makes one. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So all of this goes, these movies are depicting and they're playing on, on that on that uh, which God created and they always got to make a mockery of God in the Bible to try to prove so this is Satan that's behind this and it's Satan who's behind Hollywood we know that's where Holly, the whole name of Hollywood comes from the whole Holly Lucifer it comes from uh, Satan being a holy angel or holy Lucifer in heaven and uh, which he fell and men are, are uh, showing forth that God didn't give Satan no mercy in heaven. So this is where all of this is deriving from. Trying to give Satan back glory and put Satan back in the place where God had replaced him with the, with the uh, saints of God in the body of Christ. So we really need to 
find out whose side we're on and we need to make a choice. Are we going to stand for Christ or, or what are we going to do? Are we going to allow ourselves to be manipulated by this world? Or where, where are we going to stand? Because now it's time to, to make a choice. And the choice that has to be made uh, is whether you're going to uh, hearken unto the voice that you hear or, or are you going to listen to the voice of Satan. But the Bible said, my sheep, they know my voice. And when I call, they come. So this is a final call to those who haven't repented to God because time is running out and the gospel is being preached all over the world. He said, when the gospel of the kingdom is preached all over the world, then shall come an end.